Oh, hey, Cove. Cotton? Yeah? Oh, it's been so long. It sure has. What is it? Well, I was wondering if maybe you wanted to get back together with me. Oh, Cotton, I thought you would never ask. Fuck no. What? Fuck you. You left me to hunt Kestodon. Well, and Seamus and Juros and Wolg and... Get out of my home! Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, it is another one of those wonderful times in the new world where we have, you guessed it, brand new, beautiful, fun things. Today, one of those things is Master Rank Culve Taroth. The Golden Lady herself has returned to the game in upgraded fashion, ready to melt some hunters and, well, die. Yes, this time at the end of the quest, she dies. But in order to get to that point, you have to beat her. Defeat her, whatever you want to call it, you have to make it to the end of the fight. And in this case, it isn't necessary easy. So today, my pungent little peonies, I present everything you need to know to fight Master Rank Culve to Roth. Starting off with the overall nature of the quest, this is no longer a siege. You don't require 16 player lobbies to get this done efficiently, and in fact, it is entirely doable solo. That said, the way that this quest was scaled specifically does mean that it leans towards multiplayer hunting. Against one player, she has around 50,000 health, against two, she has around 75,000, and against four, she has around 100,000. Simplifying that, she has twice as much health against four players as she has against one. Mathematically speaking here, four players have the clear advantage. Our strength has always been in our numbers. There are three zones, which are Zone 2, Zone 3, and Zone 4 from the original High Rank Culve quest. Each of these zones has an inbuilt time limit, so yes, unfortunately this fight does in fact come with DPS checks. Depending how hard she gets locked in animation, Culve will always leave 7 to 8 minutes after entering a zone if you don't get through enough of her health. The specific numbers being that you have to get through 30% of her health in the first zone, 30% of her health in the second zone, and then of course the final 4 40% of her health in the final, most intense zone. This means that while the quest technically has a 50 minute time limit, the longest it will ever really go is 21 minutes, as that is stretching the very edge of each damage check to its very limit. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. You need to be able to survive her ridiculously high damage without dying. As with all monster hunting, living is the best way to increase your damage. However, now more than ever, I would recommend trying to shove a little more damage skills into your sets. That said, don't worry about working in part break or anything like that, because as much as the NPCs still have the old dialogue telling you to hit her chest and break her parts and all that, this really is just a straight up damage check. The one thing to note here, however, is that breaking her horn specifically does result in bonus carves, so it's not a bad thing at all to focus on the head when you can. Aside from that, really, it's just based around doing general damage. As weird as it is, I feel like I just spent two minutes saying this is a regular Monster Hunter fight. As for individual fight changes, she seems to have access to some of her later zone moves earlier in the fight now. And then there are also the arch-tempered moves, which did make it through to Master Rank, including the Fury Mode entering breath move, the Molten Paw Slam, and the sweeping fire breath that I didn't honestly remember was a thing before actually doing some research. And I know this because I am a professional. Which, aside from some slight augmentation to existing abilities leaves us with a grand total of two actually new moves, both of which only activate in the final zone, both of which are absolutely awesome and incredibly fitting to her personality and locale. First up, she gets this really cool sort of explosive body slam, where she stands up on her hind legs and glows and then just jumps on you, turning the floor below her into a mess of molten gold and oh, it's just beautiful as hell. But no Nowhere close to as beautiful as, of course, her big, super cool, super move! That's right, she gets up on the middle of the pillar in the middle of the final zone, finally giving it an actual sensible reason to exist in the first place other than offering hunters free jump attacks, and she uses her elevated position to just melt the entire roof for an attack that looks absolutely badass, though functionally isn't all that actually dangerous. When this attack happens, just look up and move to the side and you'll be pretty okay. As far as advice for killing her faster in general, in zone 2, which is where she begins now, your first objective should absolutely 
absolutely be a mount even before pushing her into the wall, because when you mount Kelv to Roth, you make her go molten, which just increases her hit zone values across the board by a pretty sizable margin. There are tons of ledges in this zone, there's a massive slope, and there are even wedge beetles above you to assist in getting this mount, so it is really quite easy to achieve this. In zone 3, which is now the second zone, there is a droppable rock on the ceiling, as well as two lava geysers across the room. One special note here is that there actually were three droppable rocks in this zone back in high rank, but Capcom decided to change it to only being one for the balancing of this master rank quest. They're my rocks now. And sadly, in the last zone, the best advice that I can give you is to fight for your damn life. Take advantage of the aerial attack pillar in the middle to try and get another mount, but don't kill yourself in the process. I'd also recommend saving all sleep and paralysis type mechanics into this final zone, as logistically it's really hard to get her sleeped or paralyzed more than once just because of her numbers, and as such, the best choice is to do it in this final zone, simply because you have to get through more of her health here than anywhere else, and she is also deadlier while in this room. So it is just the logical place to try and use these. Aside from this, if you are using an elemental weapon, remember that Kalv is weakest to Thunder with her mantle on, and then Ice with it off, which sort of makes sense when you consider the fact that she just took off her coat, so of course she is weaker to cold. One final note, though also quite the important note, is that the Elder Melder also has new functions thanks to the addition of Master Rank Kalv to Roth. These additions are Kalv Alchemy and Kyar Alchemy, which reward you with sublimated or incandescent weapons respectively, which are the rewards for the old Kalv Siege Quest. Kalv Alchemy can drop any weapon from Kalv, from Rarity 6 up to the Kyar weapons, and Kyar Alchemy can only give you R8 regular Kalv weapons or Kyar weapons. The big selling point here is you can use your your high rank called materials for this. Yes, those tens upon tens upon occasionally hundreds of individual little parts from untold hours of farming, yes, they finally have a place other than selling for Zenny, because you can use them to create the R6-8 to eight weapons that you turn into the upgraded Rarity 12 versions. Speaking of which, we already have a video on the channel going over the weapons and armor if you want to check out a little bit more in depth, but to sum it all up and not repeat ourselves, the armor is very, very pretty, though skill-wise is very much support focused, and the Kiar weapons are all super incredible elemental options. So if any of that sounds like something you'd be interested in, it might be just about the right time to get your farm on. No! 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 And that just about covers it, ladies and gentlemen. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been everything that you need to know about Master Rank Gulf to Roth. Do you like what Capcom has done with her? Are you totally going to craft and wear that armor? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love, so let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame, or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.